So before we talk about our main topic, logarithms, it's important that we discuss exponents and exponentials. And we're going to first begin by reviewing a few things from Algebra 1 slash Algebra 2 concerning rational exponents. Now a rational exponent is one that forms a ratio and a ratio is a fraction. <laughs> so we'll begin with this. We call this x squared is how we would say it. And it represents x times x. Now if we had a square, notice how I said the word square, square. If we had a square that had dimensions x by x, so it was x tall and x wide, then the area of this square would be x squared. And now there's no coincidence that we just use that word multiple times, square. How do we say this? We say square root. And this is very appropriate because a square root could essentially be called the square's leg. So what is the square root of 9? Well, if I had a square and the area was 9, how long would one of the legs be? Well, it's a square, so it has to be the same number. 3 times 3 is 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. That's why it's 3, because it's the square's leg. Now, I bring this up for a couple of reasons. One, what is the power of this x in here? Well, it's to the first power. But when we say square root, there technically is a little two out here, right? A squared that we just tend not to write. And so what happens is that a square root would appropriately, appropriately look like this. Similarly, we say this is x cubed. And we would say this is the cube root of x. Notice in this case, there actually is a 3 written. When it comes to square roots, they tend not to put the 2 on the outside, but it's understood that there is a 2 out there because it's the square root. So with that out of the way, we understand that this is a square root for part A. And that means there's a 1 on the inside and there's a 2 on the outside, even though they didn't write the 2. We can rewrite this by putting this outside number in the denominator of this exponent and the number on the inside goes as a numerator. Perfect. And that's it. So we've rewritten A using an exponent. And exponents are important because as we work with logarithms in the future, we will need exponents. For part B, this is a cube root. And in a similar fashion, it's 1 over 3. For C, this time we have a 2 on the inside, the 3 is on the outside, so the, the number outside on the root goes as a denominator, and any powers inside go is a, as a numerator. So the 3 is a denominator, the 2 is a numerator. What does D mean? Let's write this backwards. So this is saying the, the, the 1 goes on the inside. And the 2 goes on the outside. This is asking us for the square root of 4. So if I were, you could rewrite the square root of 4 as 4 to the 1 half in the calculator. And it would be an answer of 2. So this one actually has a final, final numerical answer. E, 8 to the 1 third. Hmm. Let's compare these. So we said 4 to the 1 half was the same as this, correct? So we could rewrite 8 to the 1 third as this. Now, how do we know that this was equal to 2? Well, here's why. You do a factor tree on this number. We've done those in the past. I circle my prime numbers. That's a 2 times 2 on the inside. And what happens is that this number on the outside tells me how much of a group I'm looking for. So I'm looking for groups of 2s. So I'm looking for pairs. Here's a pair of 2s. And it comes out once, and so that's why this was a, a the square root of four was two. Now, what about a cube root of eight? Well, same idea. If we were to go ahead and do a factor tree for eight, that's two times four, that's prime. Two times two, and those are prime. So I could rewrite this as two times two times two. Now, when I'm looking for with a square root, we're looking for pairs. For a cube root, we're looking for groups of three. Here's one group of three. I pull that out, and the answer is going to be two. 
What if this had been a, a two instead? Well, we could pull out only one pair of twos and the other one would stay inside. What if this were my actual problem and I'm looking for cube roots? Well, again, I'm only looking for a, a group of three, so that comes out as a two. And then whatever's left on the inside stays on the inside. <laughs> I think I need a hug. So for eight, we have a cube root of eight. We've established that you could do a factor tree for that and the answer will come out to be two. Wow, F, F, we have a 16 squared three. We'll rewrite that as a radical. Um, we'll come back to that in a bit. And then G. This has a negative power. Now a negative power switches along the fraction bar. So it reciprocates. So right now, it, this is this is the problem that we have. It's over one. I If I go ahead, I want to get rid of this negative right here. I don't know if you see that negative. I would move this entire thing to the denominator. If you want to do extra math, you're invited to check out textbooks, check out other people's YouTube videos. They do some crazy stuff. I'm not about that life. I just want to keep it simple. If it's got a negative, you drop it down on the other side of the fraction bar, it becomes positive. Okay? Something about inverses and all that stuff. You can chat with me if you're interested. Okay, so we, we end up with this, right? And we could go ahead and rewrite this as a radical. This would be a fifth root of 64. And then the one would be in here. But we don't need the one, because it's just a little one. Now, none of those are technically exponentials, but in order to work with exponentials, we need to be pretty comfortable with exponents. And so that's why we took our time dealing with some exponents. What does an exponential look like? So everything you've seen up to this point, for example, if we look at a quadratic, that's a quadratic. The variable is x. That's a quadratic. This is an exponential. Notice a difference that the variable x is not the base, it's the actual exponent. That's why it's called exponential because the variable is the exponent. So in general, an exponential looks something like this, right? Y is equal to some number to the x power. Now, this is called your base. And this number is called the exponent. And even though it's been taught you since elementary and middle school, I just want to make sure that we were covering all of our bases. Well, this is an algebra class, so let's actually go ahead and do some algebra. You're going to see all these problems, and what you're going to notice about all these problems right off the bat is that the exponent is in the, or the variable is in the exponent. So our usual techniques that we've been teaching you for solving quadratics, for example, aren't going to be extremely helpful here. We have to do some different things in order to find the values of x's because these are in the exponents. <laughs> I think I need a hug. However, for these problems, we want to make the bases the same. So for example, a, notice that the bases are the same. Perfect. So if the bases are the same, we can set the exponents equal to each other. So this for a would be 2x equals negative 5. And then we would solve for x. And so for a, that's our answer. You might, we're starting off easy, right? So you might want to just pause the video and make sure you got that. It maybe was so fast, you might want to replay it. But we can get away with that because the bases are the same. So if the bases are the same, we can set the exponents equal to each other. Well, but Mr. Over in Part B, they're not the same. Silly folks. Nine. If, if, if you're not comfortable with your multiplication tables, it's okay. Let's do a factor tree on nine. That's three times three. How many threes is that? Three times three. That's three squared. So I can rewrite nine as a three squared. Oh, snap. The bases are the same. Wow.
So guess what? Set the exponents equal to each other. Solve for x. I'm going to add one to both sides. Uh, yeah, at this point, you know, you are algebra 2, so order of operations is important. And you need to know in what order to do certain things. So in this case, we get that b is 3 over 2. C. Wow, we have a, this is not, not only not the same base, but it's a fraction. Well, let's take 32 apart. That's 4 times 8. That's 2 times 2. 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. Wow, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 2 to the 5th power. So, this is 2 to the x is equal to... 1 over 2 to the 5th power. Gosh, that's so tempting, right? We have the 2 and we have the 2, but isn't, is, we can't have a fraction. If only there was some way we could move this fraction across the division bar. Hmm. If we could just move it up here. Hmm. Um, we can, right? Negative exponents. Um, now, we don't need this 1 down here. Because it's just a one down there. So now they're the same bases. I can set the exponents equal to each other. And that's it. You're going to notice that our algebra lately for this topic is pretty pre-algebra. Algebra 1-ish, algebra like first semester. It's pretty basic. What was The algebra 2 topic at this point is the thinking that goes into it.